Okay, I'm making a video here on page anatomy, creating new, going to print, going to letter. Over here, I'm going to go and change our units of measure to inches. And coming down here, and I'm looking for the bleed. I'll explain what a bleed is in a moment. 0.125 IN. If this lock is engaged, I just click here and this measure jumps across so that it's around the entire page. So what a bleed is, is it's an, a measure that's going to be indicated by a red line here that allows you to drag your image boxes all the way over the page so when this does get cut, if you're going to print, you won't have to worry about white edges because sometimes if you were to drag your picture right to the edge of this, there might be a little shift of the image and then when it gets cut, you have a weird white line. If you drag your picture off of the page, it allows some leeway. So if the cut shifts a little bit, you'll still have some picture there. So you won't end up with those awkward white edges. Okay, I hope that explains that. So, anatomy of the grid. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this first is I'm going to go and set up my grid. And a grid is like on a city street. It's a way to organize chaos. Um, I'm creating a layout so that I can put my information in there in a nice way that everybody's going to be able to digest. And we're going to create guides. For this one, I'm going to go four rows, three columns. To the margins, meaning that it's going to um, make these equal distance within the edges of the margin. This dead area here around the page is called your margin area. This one where it would be pinched with another page is called your gutter. These squares are called modules. This is a modular grid. So I'm going to go and do some layout real quick here. And I'm going to go and click and drag down here with a rectangle tool. And swatches are over here on your dock, or not your dock, it's just your toolbar. And the way you navigate this is these two arrows, you can snap it back in or you can click it. If you prefer to have it off of there, you can drag it by that tab out here. If you'd rather put it away again, you can go and drag it back in. So this is selected. I select it with my black selection tool, and I'm going to give it a red outline. Okay, if this is in the front, this is the fill. But I don't want to fill, so I'm going to hit the none. Okay, go up here, deselect that by clicking away going back and getting another rectangle and creating a long column and if I uh, go and bring this to the front clicking on it or the letter X will toggle these two forward backwards go and hit the red line okay I'm gonna get my type tool and I'm going to start labeling these things um, one more thing I'll do it up here Okay, so red outline. All right, type tool, letter T. I can click and drag a word, and I'm gonna hit my caps lock for this so I can type them all in caps. Oh, I thought I had my caps lock on. Command or control space bar will allow you to zoom in, and I want this to be all capped. So type, change case, uppercase. I know I'm going a little bit fast, but it's because I'm trying to keep the video to a minimum time. You can rewind and check it out a little bit. Gotham is my favorite type these days, and I'm going to go up here and center justify it. Now what you'll notice is that depending on the tool you choose, this whole bar will change. Okay, Command 0 or Control 0 will get you centered out. Again, control spacebar and marquee, click and drag over it, and then you can use, uh, you can, if you're on this tool, you can get your spacebar and you can get the hand. And notice that this is at the, type of the, t uh, the top of the type box. With the black arrow selected, you see there's this right here where it aligns to the top. I want to align it to the center. You can also align it to the bottom, but I'm going to the center. Control zero. And this be this would be where I need to put this over here. And these green lines that are showing up right there indicates absolute center. Those are called smart guides. 
I want to label this column, so I'm going to hit the Option key and the Shift key, because if I hit the Shift key, it slides perfectly on the same plane. Then the smart guy tells me you're centered. Click on that three times. Column. Clicking on this, Option. I don't need to hit the Shift key. And drag it here until I get the crosshair. There it is. This will be Spatial Zone. Sometimes, you know, there are going to be like magazines that will put the name of their magazine on the bottom. I'm going to put Adobe right down here. And I'll color it. Maybe I'll change the color on it to a passive color, a blue. So the T has got to be in place if you're going to color letters. And I'm going to change the typeface to something a little bit different so that we can tell that it's not a part of our labeling, but an, a design element. Okay, so with that, I'm going to drag, not that, I'm going to click on this and option, drag this down. And then this will be the labeling term for this, which is a marker. Grab this and drag it on these blue lines. This is called a, um, a flow line. Grab this, move it down here, and then I'm going to go up here to the rotation, where it is the rotation, right here. And then this is not a flow line, this is actually called an alley. Letter T to get my type tool, alley. And then last but not least, we're going to come all the way over here to the inner margin, and the inner margin is labeled and known as a gutter. Okay, last thing I want to do is I want to give you the opportunity to do a little bit with uh, the pen tool. This is the Bezier pen tool. And so, um, like right down here, I'm going to click, and then I'm going to click, shift click over here. And it's not filling with any color because there isn't any color assigned. I want this to be a stroke. So the bottom box pops up, go to black, and then over here, I don't see strokes anywhere. So I'm going to go under window go to stroke and I want to make this a 0.5 weight stroke and I want the end of it to be an arrow or a bullet or something let's go with a triangular arrow and I want you to use these to indicate what each of these are okay and then if I hit the letter W you get a preview and that is what I'm looking for for our anatomy of the page um, when you send these, when you save these, you're going to go to uh, export this as a PDF or print, and it'll be your last name. And then I put exercise or E1 and save it to your desktop, but then place it in your um, folder that we have here at school, your work folder. Save this to the desktop, and you're going to see that it'll pop up and give you a preview as to what you just created. And if I hit, this is Acrobat, if I hit con, Control L, it'll be full page. And this is what I should see with your name on it. And it can be any kind, you know, you can colorize these if you want to. Um, and that should be about it. Get these arrows and indicate what exactly this is. So for the spatial zone, I might do an arrow in this direction, that direction, this direction to define the contour edge of this zone. Um, I might create two lines right here so that you can illustrate what a flow line is because right now when you hit the W, you don't have the guidelines anymore. It's really just floating there. Module, you know, again, you can maybe color this in with a full color. Same thing with the column. And uh, the gutter, I might do an arrow here and an arrow here just to indicate, you know, that that is the gutter. Okay, and then you save it and uh, that'll be it.